Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are in Taipei. It's the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2019 Asian Qualifiers. And we're getting ready to watch Chinese Taipei take on Japan in a do or die game to advance to the second round. Well, that is where both of these teams are trying to get, but it's been a, a tough old haul uh, to this point uh, for both of these teams. However, uh, Chinese Taipei uh, have shown that they can come up and get a big win and against none other than Japan, a team that uh, they beat in the last window. More on that in just a second. In this window, Chinese Taipei uh, lost to the Philippines 93 to 71 at home. They actually played quite well for long stretches in that game. And also uh, Japan uh, went up and got the shock of all shocks. Really hit I me. Mean, they beat Australia. So uh, these are the standings in Group B. And you can see down at the bottom, Chinese Taipei and Japan, uh, both of them with the same record. So the one that ends up with two wins will progress into that second round. Uh, and I think it's safe to say, really, that uh, Japan quite possibly could be the favorites coming in this game, having just uh, shocked Australia and handed them their first defeat since they joined the Asian region. Well, it has been an, an absolutely brilliant start uh, for the World Cup qualifiers, uh, the new system of competition, uh, which came in, started back in November. So this is the third window. We had the November window, the February window, and now we have the June window. And what's special uh, about this now for Japan is uh, that they've shown that they can overcome that adversity and, and get a vital win and now they need to get another vital win, and they've been able to introduce Rui Hachimura, there he is, to their lineup in the World Cup qualifiers uh, in this third window. He plays at Gonzaga in America, so was not uh, in the first four games, but he has made it back, and they've also made a couple of other changes. They got Yuta Watanabe back, who's just finished at George Washington University, and also they've got Nick Fazikas, uh, who has come in and made quite an impact uh, as their naturalized player scoring 25 points and crowding 12 rebounds. Hachimura had 24 points and seven rebounds. He was, uh, they were both, in fact, two of three from three-point range. Almost had identical shooting stats, in fact. Uh, Fazika's 10 of 19 from the floor and Hachimura 10 of 18. For Chinese Taipei, well, you know, obviously every game is different. Um, I think they need to draw on the positives uh, from their game against the Philippines and not dwell on the negatives. Uh, one positive being uh, that they led at the end of the first quarter, uh, that they were still close, really, uh, until, I'd say, midway through the fourth quarter when the Philippines just kind of turned it on and, and pulled away. But up to that point, uh, they were pretty good value, uh, pretty good effort, and we will see if they can if they can return to the form uh, that they showed uh, for for big stretches of that game against the Philippines and also in their game against Japan uh, when they got the one point win in Japan. So right now we're going to have a pause for the playing of the national anthems. Chinese Taipei and Japan starting with Japan. Of Chinese Taipei Olympic Cup Candy. Please welcome the sportsman singer, Mr. Cheng Hao Xuan. Shan 
各位朋友们，请坐下 ，please be seated. So the players are going to shake hands. Uh, feel the tension here because the stakes are so incredibly high. I mean, it is. This is. Uh, this is what it's all about, folks. It's do or die. It's all or nothing. It's make it uh, to the second round. If you win, and if you don't win this game, then it's. All your hopes of getting to the FIBA Basketball World Cup are gone. We're going to get a look at the referees here shortly. There they are. They're behind uh, the Chinese Taipei players from Lebanon, Indonesia, and Korea. Raba, Arianto, and Entai. So Raba, Nujan Raba. Raba Nujaim, rather, rather, and Harianto Sutario and Intai Kwang from Lebanon, Indonesia, and Korea. That's a good crew as well. So they brought the uh, the heavyweights in here for this big game between Japan and Chinese Taipei. Togashi, I mean, Makoto Hiyajima, you know, it's interesting to see how he blends in with, uh, with the newcomers because he was their leading scorer. Takeuchi as well. Uh, but obviously, uh, all the attention uh, for Japan is going to be on Hachimura and Fazika. Fazika, excuse me. You got Hijima who can score. Yuka Togashi, who is a, a terrific point guard. And Daiki Tanaka, also, who is uh, a big talent. Hijima actually had six points in the win over Japan. For Chinese Taipei, keep an eye on Cho, number one. I still think he has the ability to make the big plays. And uh, we'll see if he, if he comes to the four. Here's going to be the starting five, Liu Yang. He was terrific. He had a great start against the Philippines. Chin, uh, Quincy Davis the third, obviously, and Tseng, who uh, was great. Uh, I would say for about almost three quarters of the game. I mean, he couldn't have given any more uh, than he gave against the Philippines. Brought an element of toughness. So Julio Lamas uh, did a lot of great things with Argentina. Coached them, in fact, at the Olympics in 2012. In Argentina, kind of a cradle of, uh, of coaches in South America. I and mean, that's where you go to find great coaches. And Cho Chun San, the head coach of Chinese Taipei. <laughs> Sing Wing Ting had uh, three points, four assists in that first game. Uh, but perhaps his. Perhaps his uh, overall impact isn't measured in stats, but how he goes out there and competes against the bigs for the other team. So I think Fazekas is going to be a real problem uh, for Chinese Taipei today. But the big question is, can Japan follow up one great performance with another? Quincy Spencer Davis the third uh, wasn't, I would say, really at his best the other day, but that wasn't as much to do with him as it was to the to the bigs of the Philippines. Uh, they just had too many weapons, and he had to shoulder the load and 
had to play, I think, too many minutes, almost 38 minutes. You got to get him more of a breather. There's Pazikas. You're going to really enjoy watching him, and of course, Achimura. Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, folks. We are in Taipei. This is Chinese Taipei in the blue taking on Japan in the white in the do or die qualifier to determine who goes to the second round. And Nick Vazikas comes out and misses with his first attempt from the floor. And a foul called by Togashi and Chen. After he went baseline, just a little bit too late. Fazekas didn't want to go down and double down and leave his man open. So here it's Singh. Without well, singing his praises, he misses with his first attempt. Tagashi. Baseline. Fazekas wide open. Well, if Quincy Spencer Davis, the third, had a tough matchup the other day against Andre, both Andre Blatch and June Marfajardo, uh, it's quite a two-headed monster for the Philippines. Uh, you have to say Fazekas is going to be pretty. Uh, the specter of guarding him and being guarded by him is is pretty intimidating as well. Although I don't think uh, Davis will be intimidated by anybody, judging how he's played over the years. Here he is again, Fazikas inside, scores again. And I'll tell you what, if they don't collapse and shut him down, uh, that is going to open up possibilities out on the perimeter. Of course, with Fazikas, there's no Ira Brown, who was a great Japanese national team player, but they felt like they had to make the change. And now the interception, Fazikas throws it, telegraphs it right into the hands of Chinese Taipei. And they go in for an easy layup. Here it is again. Look, Lou just steps in and flushes it. So sloppy play from Fazekas. Penetration drive, and we've got a tie game. Amazing what a turnover will do in terms of sparking a team, and that was Chen. So Lu Ching had the dunk, and Chen Ying Chung goes in for the layup. And it's a confident looking Chinese Taipei team, but a three pointer. The answer from Sugashi. Now Fazekas with both Spencer Davis and Sing Wing Sing Wen Ting bearing down on him uh, loses the ball, but the ruling was that it went off of Chinese Taipei. Already see Fazekas' numbers. Uh, I've got a feeling he's going to have another big game today. Here's Atsumura. This is Mark Few back at. Uh, Gonzaga will be watching his uh, young player today live or at least on the highlights and he'll certainly be encouraged by the way that he's played. Absolutely breathtaking in his game against Australia. Ball goes out of bounds three seconds on the shot clock. I tell you Achimura. You'd probably have to say made a, a wise decision. Uh, it's his choice of his uh, choice of colleges. Oh, look at that! He inbounds the ball off Fazekas, and then Singh goes up, keeps it alive, and Tagashi now pushes it up the floor for Japan. And Hiyajima says, "I'm going to jump back in the spotlight. Don't forget about me." Well, he had been the star of Japan's. Uh, Asia Cup campaign back in 2015, Hiyajima. 
And now Daiki Tanaka hands it off to Vizikas, who scores with a little runner. And a three-point play opportunity. And folks, I don't know about you, but I've seen enough. This is a completely different Japan team. Even though you have the likes of Hiyajima and Tagashi and so many others, it's the incorporation of Fazikas, perhaps more than anything, that has uh, changed the dynamic of this team. And Chinese Taipei not able uh, to get the rebound. It goes out of bounds. So the ball will stay down at this end. And presumably the good news as well will be that if Japan do win this game, that they would have Fazikas in that September window as well as Hachimura uh, before he goes back to Gonzaga, although that remains to be seen. The good news is he's been here for the third window. Well, trying to get the ball to Achimura down low. Ball goes out of bounds. Lou Lamas really, uh, you know, when he took over and coached at the FIBA Asia Cup last summer, he said, listen, you know, this isn't something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. And while we saw flashes of good play from Japan, here's a turnover. Uh, they weren't able to find that consistency. But now Atsumura floats in and scores. Hiyajima rather scores, so that forces a timeout from Chinese Taipei. And I think the reality is uh, when you look back at Japan back last summer and also in the first couple of windows of the qualifiers, they simply needed an injection of quality in that low post. A traditional, more of a, not necessarily traditional big, but a big body uh, who can do a variety of things. And that is what Fazikas can do on both ends of the floor, but his ability to put the ball in the basket, his passing. It's in the paint. Paying with 10. Chinese Taipei players see Sing Wing Ting uh, over there on the sideline. Excuse me, uh, in the low post. He was smiling away, trying to keep it loose. There he is going up for the rebound. Ball goes out of bounds over to Japan. But, you know, there's no getting around it, folks. I mean, this game is for all the marbles, so to speak. I mean, you don't win this game, it's no more World Cup qualifiers. So, you need to win. Uh, to climb in the group standings for third place uh, to advance to the second round. And now the, the jump shot rattles in from Hiyajima. And the lead is 15 to 4. And he's Taipei staying with it but missing a couple of times. Now, understanding and hustling down the floor, Japan, Hijima. Fazikas was surrounded, couldn't catch the ball. And the coach of Chinese Taipei, Cho Chon San, must be thinking to himself, yep, it's just like everybody said, this Japan team is just a little bit different. To the last one that we played. Tanaka comes out. Good start for him. Togashi also out of the game. Here's another promising youngster for Japan. And Baba, I was really impressed with him last year in Lebanon at the Asia Cup. Really uh, seems to thrive. Yudai Baba in that open court game. So Japan, remember. The host nation of the 2020 Olympics, they want their basketball team 
uh, to not just be competitive. They want them to be to be good by that point. And we're seeing good signs here today against Chinese Taipei. Davis misses. Out the pass. Hiajima. Now Baba. Yudai Baba gets it inside to Achimura. Takes the contact. Puts it up and scores. Foul down low. Uh, Atsumura, who that picks up his first foul. You know, he really started making headlines, a lot of headlines, back when he played at the under 17 FIBA uh, Basketball World Cup that was staged in Dubai. And he was that tournament's leading scorer, for average anyway. And that was in 2014. There's the jump shot, and he's fouled. Well, it's a cardinal sin. You don't want to foul the jump shooter. Nikia Jima was trying to get a hand in the face. In fact, the foul was on uh, Shinoyama. What do you say, Shinoyama? And Lu Qingju misses with his first attempt. And you know, when you're struggling and the and everything starts to get on top of you, the free throws become just that little bit harder. But it's also an opportunity to get back in the game. So you got to make him. He makes one of two. He's struggling for points on offense. Free throws are a must. Baba. Now Fazikas. Shinoyama inside the Fazikas. Where was Fazikas going there? That was no chance of uh, finding a teammate. Also in the game, Takeuchi, the veteran, number 15 for Japan. Japan don't want to start getting sloppy. They've done a good job. They've had a great start. They want to step on the accelerator and lower the boom if they can on Chinese Taipei because Chinese Taipei uh, is not a bad team. They will they will keep plowing away, especially if they can get this man involved. Into the corner. And Spencer Davis, Quincy Spencer Davis, the third, with, tried to get the tap in. Now quickly to the other end, and again, another turnover. This time it was Baba trying to make the pass to Fazikas. And this time, the jump shot from Lu Qingju is good. And that is really going to get under the skin of Julio Lamas because it follows a couple of turnovers for Japan. They've got the opportunity, perhaps, to go for the knockout punch. And so far, they haven't delivered it. Fazikas. Off one foot, misses, is able to tap the ball, and a foul has been called on Chinese Taipei. Now an offensive foul has been called on Joji Takeuchi. Top right of your screen there. Well, he had position. He wasn't moving, and Takeuchi just kind of ran into him. So you can see where the official, where the referees are coming from on that one. Three-point attempt is good from Lu Qingju. Now the deficit just nine points. Fazikas for three answers. Boy, that is something that will calm the nerves of Japan fans. Davis answers. Fans getting what 
They are hoping to see today some excitement. Both ends. Chinese Taipei really giving everything. Takeuchi, meanwhile, for three. It's almost like Japan are inviting them back into the game. Look at the spin move. In the lane. Oh, it couldn't get to go, but the follow. Boy. Hu Long Mao is uh, bringing it for Chinese Taipei, and I think we're going to have a timeout. Oh, yeah, that was, I think that's an unsportsmanlike. He pulled him down by his shoulder. I think they may have missed that. Ta Takeuchi clearly had his hand on his shoulder and pulled him down to the ground. So they really are going to dodge a bullet on this one if they've not called the unsportsmanlike foul. See the bench points, been big for Chinese Taipei. Just because you are not in the starting lineup does not mean uh, that you're not uh, an important player. Hu Long Mao showing that much right now. That was his uh, three pointer that we watched. And right here, look at that. You see that? He just tugged on him right on his left shoulder. Anyway, I, I may have that wrong, and maybe the referee's got it right. No matter what, these things even out over the course of the game. So now it's a nine-point game, and who makes both free throws? And it looks like the Chinese Taipei players like Hu and Lu Qingju are really, uh, and Davis as well, really embracing the challenge of this new-look Japan team that's that's arrived in Taipei with so much hype uh, with the incorporation of this man, Fazikas and Achimura. Spin move, scores. Who again, this time off the front of the rim, Fazikas. Little outlet pass to Shinoyama. Now inside to Fazikas again. And good defense from who doubling up and you know Fazekas put the ball on the deck and that makes him uh, easier uh, to knock the ball away from. Look at this. You keep the ball up high, it's not gonna happen. Shinoyama. Over to Baba. Baba again. Gets it to Fazikas, who has the ball waist high, and this time it was Ping Chun Yin who reaches in and knocks it away. Baba bounce pass to Takeuchi, and Takeuchi has to rush up a shot at the end of the shot clock. Three here would cut the deficit to seven. Cho, who's coming to the game, a highlight at the start. He's a player. He's going to put it up, but he's going to break that first attempt, and the ball bounces out to Hiyajima, who goes in off one leg, and that's quality for you folks. That's what made him such a star at the FIBA Asia Cup back in 2015. He, was, he has a scoring mentality. 
Pink up high. Cho has it for three, and again misses Fazikas. Singh putting the pressure on him. Final second of the quarter. Oh! Japan almost scored from midcourt, but the Japanese fans, the fans of the of this national team applauding, liking what they're seeing. Japan lead it 27 15 after one. So those are the shooting numbers. Japan just 10 of 14 inside the arc. And uh, both teams just looking at this. Uh, as you look at the leading scores for Chinese Taipei, five points for Hu Long Mao. Coming off the bench, and also Lu Qingju has four points. But this is the man, this is the problem that Chinese Taipei have is how do you stop Fazikas? Well, for starters, you play some defense and you read his telegraph patch that passes like Liu did. Fazikas there has 11 points and eight rebounds, and we've played one quarter. At this rate, he's going to have 44 points. And 32 rebounds. That would be pretty impressive numbers, wouldn't it? Nine points for Makoto Hiyajima. That man there, number six. And here is who, who was coming in and uh, and really sparking this team with his with his play, but also clearly uh, giving off those positive vibes. He looks like he's a confident, confident player. So the Akatsuki Five, that's what they call the, uh, the Japanese. They have come out swinging in this third window and looking very different indeed. And now Chinese Taipei looking to, uh, to get that deficit back into single digits. Oh, beautiful play, and Hachimura fouled. Ping beat him off the dribble. He went right around the young man. And then Hachimura got him with the body. This is second foul. Look at this. Free throws get it back to a 10 point deficit. Hachimura pulls up and his jumper rattles out. And now they're going to call a charge. So they're saying Baba had position. And Lou charged into him. So. Watch again. Here comes Baba moving his feet, and Lou just kind of uh, very, well, I wouldn't say clear it out, but kind of led with his right, right forearm. Baba spins. Oh, that was a big time move, million dollar move, five cent finish. But now Baba takes it away. Here he is in transition again. Oh, and he goes in for the one-handed jam. It's a 
Singh has it. Beautiful pump fake from Hu. Now it's Singh. Pump fake from him. Then he one pass too many. Japan now reacts. Achimura, but has the ball taken away from him. He's looked shaky, honestly, folks, in this first quarter. Ping has his ball taken away. Here's Achimura. He's looking to get it going. Oh, he's got his teammate wide open, but he wasn't able to get the ball inside to Daiki Tanaka. Or at least he chose to pull it out. Good play down low. Singh knocks it away. Brings it up to midcourt. So both Davis and Fazekas out of the game, catching, getting a breather. And impressive stuff, really, from Chinese Taipei. Ping. Oh, he gets rejected. Not in my house, says Rui Achimura. And Tanaka for three on the wing. So his first three points take it back up to a 15 point advantage. Tsing gets in, tries to score with a reverse layup. And Lou then comes in and commits the foul. Well, we knew that Hachimura was going to come out and make a play, and his first big one comes on defense. And that was the the dunk from Baba after the steal. Here it is again. Look at this. He is exciting, folks. There's no doubt about it. He fits into the long-term plans of this national team. A lot of good things that we're seeing out of Japan in this window. Tagashi back in the game. Singh reaches up. Fazikas into the corner now. Jump shot. And now bring it up is Yang. He's been quiet. And the pass inside. Quincy Spencer Davis the third. Tagashi, back outside it goes. Now he gets it again inside the Fazekas. And he is fouled as he turns. Miles Davis is jammed. Shot no good off the rim. And Takeuchi has it. Battling for the rebound, and Fazikas goes up. Boy, he is a handful, folks. The lead now 17 points. Fazikas, well, already 15 points and nine rebounds. Shooting numbers for both teams. And rebounding numbers there again for Japan, and that, a lot of that is Fazikas as well. So his. 
The corporation in this Japan team has just changed everything. Akatsuki 5. That's right, folks. That's what they call this Japanese. Japanese basketball and the, the fans are right behind them. Spencer Davis with a pump fake, and now he is fouled. From deep, tried to bank it in. And here's Baba again. Ota. And Ota misses the first one. So in fact, that was an unsportsmanlike that was called on Quincy Spencer Davis the third. This is both, so that's a break for Chinese Taipei. Thomas, his team's up 17. He wants to go in for the kill, but his free throws like that do not make it happen as fast as he wants. And now the basket from Fazekas, and then he breaks out the gun show. at this catches the pass turns and he was definitely fouled by Spencer Davis Quincy Spencer Davis the third. look at that <laughs> 18 points already make it 19 points so he is on a roll 19 points and nine rebounds And now a foul while attempting the three-pointer, so something good finally happens. It's going to be Yang going to the line for Chinese Taipei. Team goes out. Makes the first one. Has it again? 
Kagashi gets it to Fazikas. He makes the motion like he's shooting, wanted to draw a foul. Spencer Davis crosses midcourt. And driving in is Yang for the basket. Now it's down to 16 points. She's, yep, 16 points. You see the field goal percentage, 28% for Chinese Taipei, almost 60% for Japan. And really, that's all Fazikas. Baba. That's it down low. Boy, Ota with his back to the basket, still able to score it. Long one, no good. Turn around from Fazikas, no good. Davis with the rebound. Long one, now. Baba says, let's slow this up. Jump shot, and Davis gets the rebound. Pass out to the, the wrong, and he misses, but Davis there for the rebound and put back. And the basket is good from Baba, who has been impressive since he entered the game. Chen Ying Chun, number nine, gets it to Davis, who's going to work on Oda. Came into the game briefly, goes back out, and coming into the game is Liu Ching. Togashi goes out for Japan. Shinoyama comes back in, number 17. Excuse me, number seven. Shot clock winding down to one. Shot under pressure is 18 point Japan lead. And Yama gets it to Hiyajima. Now Shinuyama into Ota. Back out to Hiyajima. And Baba! 20 points the lead. Ujima called for the personal. <laughs> and the shot is no good from Lu. On a tough old day at the office so far for Chinese Taipei. They're battling away, but it is painfully evident right now that the Fazikas factor is immense. It is huge. Been 
15 point game after that made free throw. Zikas played uh, professional basketball in Japan, actually played college basketball 10 years ago at Nevada. And traveling the call, gives it back over to Chinese Taipei. Jump shot and three pointer fouled. The three point shooter fouled. So three free throws coming for Chinese Taipei. They're in the final minute. Well, we just see it all the time now, folks. The shooters are so good that you got to get out and get a hand in the face. And sometimes the defender gets that little bit too close and makes contact with the shooter. And then he, even if he doesn't, sometimes the referee might think he has. So it's, a, it's an intriguing situation in basketball these days. You see a lot of even potential four-point players with guys getting fouled while they make the shot. The rebounds uh, in favor of Japan. And free throw shooting uh, has helped Chinese Taipei more than it has helped Japan. But you look overall at this the three point shooting just two of 16 for Chinese Taipei. I mean they, they've got to hit their shots if they're going to have a chance in this. Japan meanwhile have taken 10 less shots from three point range but actually hit one more. They are three of six. First free throw is good. You can make all three. Second one is good. But the third one is not, but Somebody was in too early there. It was, it was uh, Chinese Taipei, in fact. So it wasn't as good as it could have been, but two out of three ain't bad. 45 28. So something that could be encouraging. We see a jump shot from Tanaka. Aki Tanaka started this game and has been positive. Takes it back up to a 19 point game. You know, the, Hachimura had such an important game the other day. He hasn't been as influential, but Japan's still playing well here. And a long shot, and Fazikas with the rebound. So that is how. It finishes the first half. Japan on top 47 to 27 as we go to the break.
So folks, we'll have a look at some of the highlights here. And while we do, I'll just go ahead and mention some of the uh, vital statistics, if you will. Uh, overall field goal percentage, 8 of 32, 25% for Chinese Taipei versus 20 of 33, 60.61% for Japan. Japan also shooting it better from three-point range, as I was just saying, three of six. Uh, if you get better at the line, uh, although they've only attempted seven three free throws, they've made four of them. They're at 57.14%. Chinese Taipei, where they're really suffering, two of 17 from three-point range. They just can't get into their rhythm from deep right now. And they're 10 of 13. Uh, at the free throw line. So that 2 of 17 from three point range, 11.76%. And also an area where they're getting beat is on the boards. 28 rebounds for Japan, 15 for Chinese Taipei. So they're almost doubling, doubling them up. And Fazikas himself has 10 rebounds. So to go with his. 18 points so he has gotten off to a flyer no surprise there they have kept Hachimura in check who's play, he's played over eight minutes uh, and scored just four points but uh, you know what we're seeing is that some of these other Japanese players with Fazikas out there and, and, and kind of uh, causing a lot of problems in the paint Makoto Hiyajima has nine points uh, Yudai Baba has six points. Daiki Tanaka, five. And Togashi uh, hit a three-pointer. He's got three points. So, you know, it's, it's looking good for Japan right now. So it's a completely different situation from what we saw last year at the FIBA Asia Cup. And also, it's a completely different situation uh, to what we saw in the first two windows when they just needed that little bit of extra, especially down on the low blocks. They needed somebody, they needed some size, and uh, they've, they've got it with Pazikas, this man right here who is, is basically proving to be unstoppable. I mean, he even, he even went to town uh, the other day when they were playing against Australia. And that 79-78 win, that was uh, that game that was played in Chiba. He had 25 points, 12 rebounds. And Fazikas was a man on a mission to say, you've done the right thing by getting me a passport and letting me play for your team. He was 10 of 19 from the floor. And he was even 2 of 3 from 3-point three range. And Fazekas played 30 minutes, so you know he's a player that can give you a lot of minutes. And against a team like Japan that has good bigs, that has incredible depth, uh, he he was uh, immense. And I think he was probably up for for the challenge as well because Tom Maker was playing for Australia, the NBA, the Milwaukee Buck. He had 13 points and 12 rebounds. Tom Maker. What's interesting in that game, in fact, was that Daniel Kickert, one of the best three-point shooters in the World Cup qualifiers, coming to the third window, missed all four of his attempts from deep. But uh, in terms of the bigs that Fazikas would have gone up against, uh, he would have uh, had to combat Angus Brandt. He would have certainly had to go up against Tom Maker, and he would have had to have gone up against Daniel Kickert. So... Um, right now, also, Australia playing uh, the Philippines, and they're up in that game in Manila, 21-16. to 16. So we're at halftime. Uh, we'll be right back for the second half.
。有人说，他们订购了世盖游龙，胸前的是荣耀，背后的是更多的期待。就像当年，年轻人需要更多的机会以及鼓励。世界很大，我知道我们的梦想就应该成真。不要管他对手是谁，要感动全民，靠的是自己的。需要你用声音告诉这个世界，这是哪里？我们需要你用呐喊声告诉自己，你有多么爱我们。站出来吧！这一次，为了我们的荣誉以及未来，我们需要你。世界上没有人比他更了解我，他的存在就是我的疗愈。一切最近，祝福自由，我可以做最真实的自己，有内外支持我，宠爱我，天生心归一。
47 28 Japan on top of Chinese Taipei at halftime and uh, Japan looking very very good their their future far more promising after two wins and four excuse me after two windows and four defeats you would have thought Japan's hopes of moving on in the competition would have been slim and none and slim had just left town but that's not the case they have rebounded by not only getting a win against Australia uh, in their last game and that that was huge because it it kind of said hey listen this Japan team is for real they've just beaten a team that had never lost in Asia uh, since they joined the Asian party uh, last summer as part of the Asia zone uh, when they went on that unbeaten run at the FIBA Asia Cup and now uh, in the crossover you, you know Japan can advance and face Syria face Lebanon face Jordan you know you would give them a good chance at winning some or most of those games if not all of those games I mean it, you know the possibilities are there for Japan and, and quite possibly uh, they'll, they'll be there they'll be at the World Cup the 32 team World Cup but you know even though it's a very uh, it's a it's an old sports cliche it's one game at a time that's what it has to be uh, they can't look too far ahead uh, they just have to look at the here and now and and that starts with playing this second half against Chinese Taipei because if they take their foot off the pedal the Chinese Taipei can come back well second half action underway folks Japan start proceedings with a turnover Not what the coach was uh, was looking for, Julio Lamas, but both they never are, are they? Three pointer, and that will fill the confidence, fill the Chinese Taipei team and fans with confidence. Lou coming out and stroking the three. It's just their third three of the game. But they couldn't throw the ball in the ocean from long range. In the first half, so maybe uh, those forces are going to change here in the second. It's something you th you'd have to say has to happen for them to be successful. They have to shoot it well from deep. So Quincy Davis collects another rebound. Saying one ten, oh back door. Somebody fell asleep over there for Japan. Don't forget, you got to play defense. Hachimura, who was held to four points in that first half, and he comes here uh, with, quite frankly, folks, what is a huge reputation. And these guys that are going up against him, well, they want to show, show them what it's all about. That you got to earn that respect over here. Well. Tagashi inside the arc. He misses. Fazikas kept it alive, but it goes to Chinese Taipei. Three point attempt off the back of the iron, and Hachimura gets the rebound. Here he is in the open floor. This is where he's exciting, but he kind of fumbled the ball. He gets it back, and then he takes it back outside. And Fazikas with a short little jump hook on the baseline scores. Clock down to six. Basket is good from Chen Ying Chun. Pazikas for three. Oh, he got it to fall. He used a little bit of rim. He got some love from the rim. Pazikas. That's the type of shot that'll drive an opposing coach crazy. It's hard enough guarding him inside. And when he steps outside and gets some help from the rim, it's a soft touch. And now the rejection from Hiyajima. The Chinese Taipei get it back. Chin. They're passing it well. Have they overpassed? No, they have not. Patience is a virtue. And Davis goes up. 
And reduces that deficit back to 15 points. Davis now starting to put up a better number. Six points, five rebounds. Fazikas for three off the back of the iron. Long rebound to Japan. And boy, Hiyajima scores and is fouled by Singh. So Singh Win Ting commits the foul. And Chen, meanwhile, of Chinese Taipei is uh, is writhing in pain. And we'll see if the physio has to come out and check on the guard. Look at this. Oh, he got it in the in the abdomen. It looked like or in the side. That is not going to feel good. He limps off the court. Actually, it may have been in the upper right leg area, the thigh. Cho Chun San, the coach. Oh, there it is again. Yeah, I think it was more like in the hip area. Yajima just keeps on keeping on. He pours in the points. He's now got 12 points. He hasn't missed a shot all day. Five of five from the floor. And Fazekas with the rebound. 18 points. And for the second time in the game, Fazekas telegraphed the pass. And this time, Hiyajima did. And boy, Japan are riding their luck. Chinese Taipei deserve better there. Very sloppy from Japan. Look at the hustle. This is what it's all about. Floor burns. It's going to take everything Chinese Taipei have to offer to give them a chance against this Japan team. And now another pass that was questionable from Fazikas. Might be an area of his game he needs to improve a little bit. Here he is catching the ball in the lane, and he scores with the runner. The reach and the foul. So it's been Quincy Spencer Davis, the third. Trying to get more involved. He's got six points and five boards, as I said. Uh, and that pales into comparison to Fazikas, who he's going up against and has 25 points and 11 rebounds. Long one from Chinese Taipei's Liu Ching, but the rebound and the putback from Liu Ching Ju. Chinese Taipei trying to stay within touch. Fazikas, oh. Boy, he's just uh, putting on a monster performance offensively. Seven points for Fazikas. Togashi thought he had all ball there. First one is gone. Second one is good as well. So 19 points to deficit. Thomas calls the play from the sidelines. So Hachimura was fouled that time by Liu Ching. Inside the arc, and Togashi strikes.
Three-pointer is good. So King Chung Yin with the three. He has really been a spark, hasn't he, off the bench today. Six points for him. I tell you what's great about the World Cup qualifiers. We're seeing the emergence of some of these players that are getting a chance to play on the big stage, and they are really thriving with the with the opportunity. Hijima goes to the bench. But I was talking about yesterday with somebody about Spain's team, about how they've brought in 17 debutants to the World Cup qualifiers. And Spain, as everybody knows, have had such incredible players over the years, but eventually you have a generational change, and the World Cup qualifiers has helped speed up that process for them as it has for other countries, like France. Here's the long jumper, and Tagashi again buries it for Japan. The three-pointer, and now a 22-point lead. Long one, no good. And Baba bounce pass intercepted by Ping. Now Lou drives in. He was rejected by Hachimura. Now three pointer. Go! Ping! Cha Ting! And that is. You could have you could have almost said we're expecting this to happen because. Chinese Taipei only had hit two of 16 in the first half. Well, not a bad shooting team from deep, but inside, and the dunk from Rui Hachimura. He's had enough. He wants to jump into the into the spotlight. Three-pointer, another one from Ping. Back to back from Ping, and it's back to an 18-point deficit. You just have to keep playing. They've still got 13 minutes to come back long way to go in this one but they've got to get stops on this end Yudai Baba drives in all oh, beautiful finish from Baba and the Akatsuki five fans on their feet Chinese Taipei call timeout and what you really notice in this whole scenario Yes, it's great to have Fazikas and Hachimura in this Japan team, but their presence is elevating the play of the others, including the likes of Baba. This is the, the shooting numbers. Japan at 55% overall. Turnovers, assists. Now, what what I like about that stat, what I like about that stat is uh, the points off turnovers. And this is this is interesting, folks. I want you to digest what I'm going to say. You saw the problems of uh, Chinese Taipei. Um, but they, they actually have 20 points off turnovers, off the Japanese turnovers. So that's interesting, isn't it? So their defense is, is at least giving them a, a measure of hope uh, to come back into this game. So the Japanese could do a little bit better job uh, when it comes to not turning the ball over. It's something I'm sure that their coach will be harping on. 12 turnovers. Here's the rebounding. To Tsing. And now this time the turnover. And oh boy, what a play from Daiki Tanaka. And that is almost unforgivable coming out of the timeout to turn the ball over like that. Chinese Taipei. And uh, that leads to a fast break bucket. And Spencer Davis with the putback jam. Yeah. 
Tagashi misses mid range. And the drive, the left hand, and Yang. And it's back to 18 points, the deficit. Well, Yang is beside himself. They've called a foul. He doesn't like the call. So Baba goes to the line, makes the first one. This is the second. Yang for three, had a hand in the face, but the rebound and the putback is there. Who has been terrific? It's back to 17 points. They just got to keep playing Chinese Taipei. Fazikas. Tagashi, wide open. Three pointer is good. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Tsing, the Yang into the corner to Creighton. He pulls in for a short one. But he didn't have enough mustard on that one. And now Tagashi catches it, crosses midcourt, and to Pazikas for a layup. Final seconds ticking off the clock for Chinese Taipei. They get it off just in time. Excellent play by Ping, who has been truly inspirational as Chinese Taipei tried to remain within touch. We have played three quarters as Japan on top, 77 to 57. Here is another look. Great awareness of the time situation and wonderful finish. Here are the game stats, and Japan have now hit seven threes. So even though Chinese Taipei have warmed up, uh, so have Japan. They each had four three-pointers in that quarter. I'll tell you, Ping, uh, for a player that hasn't played in the World Cup qualifiers for today, before today, he has been utterly sensational for Chinese Taipei. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's, a, it's an opportunity for some guys uh, to get to get some action, and he is indeed making the most of his chances.
的分析和资讯。下面是台北，中华队八中进攻外球开始比赛。Well, fourth quarter action underway, folks. Japan leading at 77-57. It's now or never time for Chinese Taipei. The sense of urgency has been there, but it is a mountain that they have to climb, and it might just be too high. Pass into Spencer Davis. Now Ping. And Yang, shot clock winding down. Step back one leg. And Yudai Baba gets the rebound. Over to Fazekas for three. Oh boy, that is quality stuff. Continues to be the nemesis of Chinese Taipei. 32 points for Fazekas, and now the steal. And Makoto Hiyajima hands it back to Hachimura, and they're going to count it. Well, I thought they might call a charge there, but you could see that Hachimura. Knew the defender was in position. He slowed up just a little bit. Here we go. Well, referee saw that as the charge. And Hachimura makes the free throw. Now Doug Creighton goes baseline, hands it off. I think Creighton might have had the shot. in the game number seven. Yajima now gets it to Hachimura. He wants to show us what he's got. And what he's got is a turnaround jumper. That was a tough shot. He's going to play at the next level. And you know what I'm talking about. That is a shot he'll have to hit. Huge talent, Rui Hachimura. Now the steal. Yang had it taken away by Baba, who gets it into Shinoyama. Over to Hiyajima in the left corner. 88-57. Japan right now playing like a runaway train. Chinese Taipei retreat to the bench. Points in the paint, I mean, that's not surprising in so much that Fazekas is such a dominant player, but you'd like to have more Spencer Davis getting opportunities for Chinese Taipei. 
And clearly, he's uh, against most teams in Asia. Uh, Spencer Davis, Quincy Spencer Davis, the third, uh, can do what he wants, but he hasn't had that opportunity today. Shinoyama applauds his teammates. We got to keep it going, guys. Let's don't stop here. And those fans of the Akatsuki Five up there banging the drums. Making themselves comfortable here in enemy territory. Hey, you really do wonder what are going to be the seven teams that join China as Asia's representatives at the FIBA Basketball World Cup next year. Safe, you, you give certainly Australia the nod to be there. You would think Iran would make it, those two teams. And then you look at some of the other teams that have had, uh, that have collected a lot of wins in the FIBA Basketball World Cup qualifiers so far in Asia. Might Japan just pull off the tremendous recovery and make it as well after 0 and 4 starts? Spencer Davis with the rebound. Tunisia, you have, excuse me, I have the wrong continent. Three pointer, no good. The drive and the basket and the foul. I do have to say probably that the likes of the Philippines probably are glad that they took on Japan when they did because had they played Japan uh, following the incorporation of Fazikas and the arrival of Hachimura it might have been a different story. Ifs and buts however do not win basketball games. You deal with the reality and the reality is Japan were searching for a formula that was going to turn their campaign around and, and clearly clearly they they've gotten an injection of quality here that's helping them they'd like to have Ira Brown as well but they're only allowed to have one naturalized player so they're using that one right now on Fazekas here's Hachimura goes in with the left hand so other teams that are looking good to make it to Asia for, make it from Asia to the World Cup. Here's Hachimura again. New Zealand are at five and one, so they've done very well so far. They've won five games in a row. The likelihood is uh, we're guessing that Australia will go to five and one after today's game. Jordan and Lebanon, they're five and one after three windows. Uh, they've certainly got a great chance. Iran are four and one, but I'm guessing they'll beat Kazakhstan today. We'll see that to go to five and one. And the pass down low. And Hijima now reaches up and comes up with a steal. Well, you'd never know that Chinese Taipei you never understand how Chinese Taipei were able to win the first meeting between these two teams. But the reality is it was a different Japan team. They've come into this one not only with Fazikas and Hachimura, but they've come into it with a full head of steam after a win over Australia. So. Three pointer from Shinoyama, no good. So the composition of Group F was uh, Chinese Taipei keep plowing away. They turn it over, and up ahead it goes to Yudai Baba for another. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Slam dunk on the fast break. He is exciting.
Boy, Chinese Taipei don't know what's hit them right now, folks. As good as Japan were in the first half, they have turned it up a notch in the second. Look at the fast break points. Japan, 21. Chinese Taipei, 8. So from Group B, you're going to have three teams that go into the second round Group F. That will be most assuredly Australia, the Philippines, and now Japan. I can't see them blowing this lead. Points in the paint, 52 for Japan, 28 for Chinese Taipei. So you got Australia, the Philippines, and Japan. Australia, the Philippines. Australia will probably go in at five and one if they can hold on and beat the Philippines. And right now they're winning that game by 15 points at halftime. And uh, so the Philippines would go in at four and two, and then you'd have Japan at two and four. And then you would have also from Group D, Iran, who most likely would be five and one. Kazakhstan. And Iraq, who are two and three. So Iran playing right now, so they would go to five and one. Kazakhstan would drop to three and three. And the best that Iraq can be would be three and three, but possibly two and four, depending on what happens in their game against Qatar. So they need to finish in the top three of Group F to advance. And they will be starting uh, behind several teams. They'll be starting behind uh, an Iran team that is four and one right now, so five and one. So it looks like the team that they might have to end up catching would be uh, Philippines. And they won't play them. But other teams will play the Philippines. Iran will play the Philippines twice. And, and crucially for Japan, they would have to most likely beat Iran, not just once, but twice. Now the drive, and unsuccessful. So 96, 57, it's just a matter of time before Japan as well get to the century mark. You'd probably like their chances even more, Japan, of getting to the World Cup if they were crossing over with a different group, with uh, the group C. But as it is, they cross over with group D. So Iran have, uh, unless they suffer a collapse today, again, are likely to go in at five and one. Philippines are likely to go in at four and two, and Australia are likely to go in at five and one. But the other thing is, uh, you've got from Asia, you've got the top three from each group plus the best fourth place team. So they do have that chance of being the best fourth place team. Takeuchi in the game. And uh, Japan right now just putting the finishing touches on what has been just a thoroughly dominating display. And I don't think, you know, Chinese Taipei, the, the mindset was right. I think everything was correct today. Perhaps they should have done more to get this man involved. Easier said than done, I know. But other than that, you can't take anything away from Chinese Taipei. They have played their hearts out. They played extremely hard uh, in their first game of this third window against the Philippines. It just didn't have quite enough. And they also played well when they played against the Philippines down in Manila. So for them, they are what they are. And they just have to keep working and hopeful, hopefully they will get better from this experience. I think today they have to get the 
you know, draw the encouraging signs of the play of Ping, for example, and really uh, bring him into this program, and and hopefully he will be a big part of things moving forward. Speaking of Ping. Ping is. Oh, the drive. Uh, let's see here. Ping. 28 years of age. Play for the Bank of Taiwan. What they call it. Pen Chung Yin. Jesse Davis goes out. First free throw is good. So Tanaka makes one of two. So they've hit the century mark. 103 to 60. And Ping scores again. Bounces out. Now, the miss, but the follow. And Ping just keeps pinging along. He's a keeper, folks. I like him. He's hustling. 17 points for him in his first qualifier. Not too bad. Three-pointer from Takeuchi. Lou pulls up with the line too hard. So as a reminder, Japan will join Australia and Philippines from Group B and Group F. And also going into that group will be Iran, Kazakhstan, and either Iraq or Qatar. Players go out. And speaking of Iraq and Qatar, just give you a little bit of insight into their situation. Oh, Oto was out of bounds there. So Iraq and Qatar will play each other. Iraq already has two wins. And they play today in Doha. And in their first game, Iraq uh, lost 77-66. So they need a win uh, to advance. If Qatar win, they will have a sweep as well. So that's a do or die game to determine who goes into that group. Three pointer. Takeuchi. Three pointer again. And Takeuchi crashing the boards. I tell you what. Competition for places in this Japan team has uh, gotten a little more intense. Uh, with, you know, when Hachimura's around, he's going to be in there. And the same with Fazikas and presumably Yuta Watanabe when he's available. He has a good chance of being in there. Takeuchi makes the first. He wasn't able to play in this window. Second one is good.
And the King moves around. Oh, looks like maybe there's an extra step taken. Good defense. Lou coming in, lays it up and in. Just took it right off of uh, Japan's number 11. Uh, Uto Naoki. Excuse me, Naoki Uto. That's how we finish, folks. Japan just really, I think the talent level was too high. And the focus, 108, 68. They win it at Chinese Taipei. So disappointment for Chinese Taipei, but uh, relief and encouraging signs for Japanese basketball. This third window, they started 0 and 4. Now they're 2 and 4. Chinese Taipei bow out with that one win over Japan in that last window. And Nick Fazikas, just wonder if uh, he's going to be uh, in the headlines in the land of the rising sun. I mean, with performances like that, he has elevated. Japan to a different level. Now he'll have to do it against better teams, but don't forget he did do it already against Australia. So this is a, a game winner. And if I were a betting man right now, which I'm not, I would say this is a Japan team that'll make it to the World Cup, but we'll have to see. Those are the shooting numbers, the rebounding numbers, 28 assists for Japan. That just jumps off the stat sheet, doesn't it? Also, there's 12 steals. And the six blocks for Japan. So it's always good to see some defensive stats uh, for the team. Game leaders, Fazikas, Hiyajima with the six assists. Pings all over the place for Chinese Taipei. Look at Baba sliding in there. Yudai Baba with a couple blocks, although I think also in the five steals for Hiyajima. That's good for him. And then the top scores, Fazika, Siajima, and Baba, 32-17 and 13 points, respectively. Look at the look at the, the signs of hope on the faces of the Japanese fans. And even though Chinese Taipei lost, their fans, they've had a good time. Look at them. They're going to go home. Hashtag, this is my house, folks. That's what it's all about, the fans. These are the standings. Australia, the Philippines, and Japan will go through to the second round. What we don't know yet is whether Australia will finish first over Philippines, although they're playing right now in Australia, are up 15 points at halftime. So it looks like they have the inside track to first place. And in fact, they've actually extended that lead now 23 points at the Philippines, uh, coming up to the midway point of the third quarter. So, aside from the fact that once again, uh, the new system of competition, uh, which FIBA has uh, very wisely instituted around the world, aside from the fact uh, that they've had a packed house here in Taipei to see this, uh, these two Asian rivals go at it, once again bringing the national team back to the fans. That's a huge success. Uh, we've also learned that Japan are a different team. Uh, if we didn't believe it after watching their game against Australia, against Australia we believe it certainly now because they've done it consecutive games and they have done it uh, through a large part to that man right there number 22 Nick Fazekas who's just having a good time out there I mean he is a, a high level player who gets it done in the Japanese league and now he's doing it for the national team and he's enjoying himself and I think uh, Fazekas envisions himself as a part of the Japanese team that will qualify for the World Cup but also play at the Olympics. So we shall wait and see what happens there. But what we do know as well is that Japan now are going to be moving into Group F. And Group F is, again, going to consist of uh, Australia, Philippines, China, and uh, Japan. 
Australia, the Philippines, and Japan. Chinese Taipei have bowed out. And it'll also include Iran, Kazakhstan, and Iraq or Qatar. So it'll be the Iraq or Qatar. And what Japan will need to do is finish in the top three of that Group F or of the two fourth place teams from Group E and Group F, they will have to have uh, the best record. And that, uh, I'm not sure exactly the breakdown on how a potential tiebreaker would work in that scenario, uh, but you know, the chances are good that they would have, um, you know, be the best fourth place team as well because they've had some, they've suffered some narrow defeats uh, in the qualifiers. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Um, one last time, it's Japan winning at 108 to 68.